Lapis Lakeside is the new island in Pokemon Sleep finally confirmed and we get three new Pokemon coming along with it. That is the Ralts line, the Dratini line and the Stuffle line, which will all be available at Lapis Lakeside. Welcome back to another Pokemon Sleep video, it's Bro Vinny here. Now this information is only currently available on the Japanese PokemonSleep.net website and in order to see this information, you'll actually need to change the language to Japanese down here. In other languages, they tend to be quite, um, uh, quite a bit slower in the release of this information. But you can also see this information briefly mentioned on the Pokemon Sleep Twitter. Now there's actually two news tabs. One is to say that yes, we've got a new island and then we've got a second news tab which was released about the same time that says to commemorate the new island being released we are getting a two week event which we're going to cover in the rest of this video. Now instead of you struggling to Google translate this Japanese page it's going to be easier for you to join a Pokemon Sleep Discord. I'll leave a link to several Pokemon Sleep Discords in my description below. And the Rainanex server does a very nice translation of this. So the first news is just to say that Lakeside Lapis has arrived. And you'll need 240 sleep styles completed in order to unlock this new island. And in this new island you'll be able to encounter a bunch of new Pokemon. And I'm going to guess that to rank up your Snorlax in Lapis Lakeside it's going to be even more difficult than Snowdrop Tundra. So it's definitely not for those faint of heart. But thankfully during a two week event period you will be able to encounter, encounter some of these Pokemon over at Greengrass Isle which we'll cover in a moment. At Lapis Lakeside we're going to get favorite berries for grass type, psychic types and fighting types. So try and prepare your berry finding S, uh, Meganium or Mankey before you hit up this area. Otherwise, it's going to be quite a bit of a struggle. Now, while we don't officially know what typings these are, I'm going to guess that the Dratini line are going to be Dragon. Hopefully not Flying, since Dragonite is also dual Flying. Um, now, for the Ralts line, up to Gardevoir, I suspect that it's going to be Psychic, and I'm suspecting that it will be Berry Specialist, and that's because we already have a skill and already have an Ingredient Psychic Specialist. So that means another Berry Specialist you can prepare for with Berry Finding S if you want a powerful team to tackle Lapis Lakeside is to get a good Ralts hopefully during this event period. Chances are the Stuffle line are going to be Ingredient Specialist because we already have a Berry Specialist and a Skill Specialist for Fighting Types. The only thing I can't predict is Dragonite because we only have a Berry Specialist for Dragon types at the moment, that is Altaria. So this could be a skill or an Ingredient Specialist. Now we'll talk about the evolution of Ralts in another video of whether to choose Gardevoir or Gallade. Since we don't have enough information right now, I'm just going to speculate that given Psychic Berries don't have Berry Specialists, it's probably better to stick with Gardevoir, whereas we have uh, Primeape and Mankey for fighting types. So I'm guessing Gallade is going to be a fighting type Berry Specialist, which we don't need that cover for. But if it turns out to be a lot better than Primeape, maybe it's worth the switch. Now, as for the second update that we got, it's about the event that commemorates the new area. And it starts a few days after the island release starting from the 29th of January. Now the island itself is going to be released on the 24th of January, which I actually don't fully understand why because that's in the middle of the week, whereas the event itself will start at the start of the week on a Monday. And once again, thanks to the people at Rainanex Calculator Discord, we have a nicely translated version of that news update. So this event will actually run for two weeks with each week having its own missions that you can complete and earn rewards that are such as Rolts Incense or Stuffle Incense or Dratini Incense. But thankfully you'll still be able to encounter these new Pokemon even if you don't have the Incense and even if you haven't unlocked Lapis Lakeside. However, for the people who have unlocked 
the new area. So if you already have 240 sleep styles completed, or you plan to complete it before the island released it, before this event starts, the game actually recommends you go to Lapis Lakeside. So it says here, if you want to meet the new Pokemon, you should actually go to Lapis Lakeside, which has me concerned because given how hard Snowdrop Tundra is, I would only expect to get three spawns every sleep session for the first three days at the new area. So even if these are boosted rates, I'm not 100% sure I want to hit Lapis Lakeside as opposed to Greengrass Isle where I can almost guarantee I'll get 16 spawns every day because I will do two sessions with eight spawns each time and maybe with a good camp ticket a bit more still. But chances are what I'm going to do for research purposes is send Piggy to Greengrass Isle while I go to the Lapis Lakeside during this event just to compare and see which area actually is better for catching these new Pokemon. The game says that the chances of encountering these new Pokemon is better at the new area, but we're getting less spawns. So I would really take this with a grain of salt. Now after the two weeks are over, two weeks of this event are over, you will no longer get the new Pokemon at Greengrass Isle, so you will only be able to get them at the new research area. As for the incenses, they will allow you to use it for one more week after the event finishes, as you can see here in the last footnote. But only at Greengrass Isle. Now, personally, I probably don't want to spend three weeks at Greengrass Isle, so if you want to use those incenses, probably use it during the week of the event rather than waiting for the week after to use it. And the main reason why I don't want to spend three weeks at Greengrass is because my area bonus is about to be maxed at 50%. So I don't really want to waste my area bonus going there again and again. So try to use those incenses. Otherwise, you'll have to wait until you get to Lap Lapis Lakeside before you can use them again. Because generally speaking, you can't use a Pokemon incense where they don't normally spawn in that natural habitat. And just to clarify, you cannot encounter any of the new Pokemon in any other area during this event period. So it's only two areas, Lapis Lakeside and Greengrass Isle, as you can see here. And the rest of the info pretty much just repeats what I already said. So you get these incenses, you can use them for one week after the event period is over. And if you haven't unlocked Lakeside, probably a good, good idea to just use your incenses before you can't use them. And this one's not as important a point, but just so you guys know, there's going to be two lots of missions, one for each week of the event, which are called the event limited missions, which like previous events, I suspect will be an extra mission list on top of your regular weekly mission list. So that's it for the news coverage. Now let's circle back to our speculation about which Pokemon will fall under which specialty. Now, as I said earlier, we already have ingredient specialists and skill specialists for psychic types. In fact, we've got two, two skill specialists for psychic types and one ingredient specialist for psychic types. So that leaves a gap with berry specialists needing coverage. So I suspect Rolts will fall into this category. And as it evolved to Gardevoir, it will probably keep the psychic typing to remain a berry specialist. But if you choose the alternate route to become to evolve into Gallade instead, well, let's take a look at what is currently available. So we've got the Mankey line and the Riolu line that cover berry and skill specialties. But we also have Stuffle or Beware line, which are a normal and fighting type Pokemon in the core series. So there is a chance that it could be a normal typing in Pokemon Sleep instead of fighting. But if it's fighting type, then I believe it's going to be ingredient specialists. Then what will happen to Gallade is probably still be a berry specialist, which means it will be constantly compared to Primate, which is of the same typing, same specialty. But if Stuffle were to be put together with the normal types, I'm a little bit more concerned because we already have two quite decent berry specialists for normal types. Of course, we've got the EVs, 
which often become evolved. So then maybe the skill, we don't count Eevee as a skill specialist for normal type, since its max potential is in evolving. But then we still have Persian and Meowth for skill specialists in normal typing. What is interesting though is that the normal type ingredient specialists are rare Pokemon. These are not commonly available. So that means if Stuffle were to be a normal type, my speculation is it's going to be an ingredient specialist, given that it's not easy to encounter Dittos or Kangaskhan in order to help fill the gaps in this typing. So then, what's even more interesting is if Stuffle be Beware are not going to be ingredient specialists for fighting type, then perhaps Gallade, so fr from Ralts, evolving into Curlia, evolving into Gallade, Gallade might take the spot of an ingredient specialist for fighting types, which has never happened before. We've seen Pokemon change berry typing, like Pupitar to Tyranitar, goes from Rock to Dark types. We've seen them change main skills, like Evolutions, But we have not seen any Pokemon change specialty upon evolution. I think this is going to be interesting if that were the case, but we'll just have to wait and see. I'm actually most excited for Dragonite out of all three new Pokemon. Dragonite has always been one of the fan favorites, but what I can't predict is which specialty it will fall under. Almost undoubtedly it's going to be Dragon type unless they really want to screw with us and give us a flying type instead. Because if you didn't already know, Drag Dragonair and Dratini are Dragon types, but once it evolves into Dragonite, it actually has two typings in the core series. So if Select Button really wants to screw with us, they could potentially give us Flying type instead, which is a much worse berry in terms of power. But also we are lacking Dragon type berries a lot more than we are Flying types. Now as for team building for Lapis Lake side, I'm going to take a look at what I have in my Pokemon box, but there's no doubt that I'll be making another video once I catch some of these new Pokemon to decide what type of team I'm going to run on Lapis Lake side. But let's go ahead and see what I have available. So Grass Fighting Psychic. So thankfully I have a Berry Finding S Meganium, which will hopefully carry me throughout the lake side. I also have Berry Finding S Venusaur, which hopefully will help me along the way as well. Especially once I unlock the level 50 skill on this Ingredient Specialist. And this level 50 skill on this Berry Specialist. Some other potential options I've got here, so Psychic type Mime Jr. Now this one's heavily tomatoes. If I have good enough farmers for potatoes and leeks, then I may run a Mr. Mime that is purely tomatoes. And for you guys preparing for this island, Mankey Primate would be a good option, especially if you get Berry Finding S. As for healers, if you want, you could either run a Leafeon or a Wynorsia. Sorry, I meant why not. But I think most people have energy for everyone fully invested by now. So if I really want to run a healer, I would still be going for my main Wigglytuff. And Bellsprout's going to be a good option as well if you got some variety of ingredients. Hopefully not all tomatoes, especially if you're, if you like me, already have a Mr. Mime that's all tomatoes. As for your choices for evolutions, if you've got a Berry Finding S option, then Espeon and Leafeon are potentially useful for this area. Leafeon if you really don't have a healer, but otherwise Espeon should overall provide more berry strength and skill trigger strength. Even though grass berries are actually about 10 to 15 percent stronger than psychic berries, Espeon is faster than Leafeon by about 20 percent, which overcompensates for that reduction in the berry strength. Along with its charge strength M main skill, therefore Espeon is going to provide more strength as long as you can keep your team healed. Let me know in the comments section below which of these three new Pokemon you're most excited about. Number one, Number two, which area you're going to choose for the event, whether it's going to be green grass or lakeside. And let me know if you think you've got a better team building idea for lakeside. Thank you for watching guys, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.